Um, the gentleman from Texas, uh, Mr. Paul, is recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and welcome, Madam Secretary. I have a general question I want to ask about foreign policy, but uh, leading up to that question, I would like to mention first that uh, the election had something to do with bringing about change in tone with our foreign policy, and I think there's been some very positive changes uh, in, in tone, and uh, Many of us have argued for more diplomacy rather than uh, more threats, so uh, many of us are, are pleased with that. Uh, it goes back to the old saying of speaking softly and uh, still being willing to carry a big stick. But sometimes uh, uh, I wonder whether that big stick doesn't get wielded a little too often and, and uh, uh, too often. But I do want to caution all of us that uh, what we say is very important and can be very beneficial, but what we do is also uh, very important. So that may cancel out the benefits of speaking more softly and being willing to talk and negotiate. Some people say that we shouldn't talk uh, to our enemies, but uh, I remember the Cold War rather well, and we did talk to Khrushchev and Mao Zedong uh, uh, when uh, they were great threats to us. So sometimes I think that uh, when we uh, look at how we stood up to tens of thousands of nuclear weapons, that we should be cautious as far as what we might do in Pakistan and put it into a proper uh, perspective. But my, my big concern is uh, whether or not we can reverse the empire mentality that I think we have adopted uh, over these many, many decades, and also the relationship of this uh, to our financial burden. Uh, though we are speaking more softly and would like to get some troops home, uh, the first thing that was done was our DOD budget was increased by uh, 9% in a time when our national debt in the last 12 months went up $2 trillion. All great nations have been brought to the news for economic reasons. We didn't have to fight the Soviets. And the Afghanistan adventure that the Russians, uh, the Soviets were involved with was very significant. And I don't know how we can, uh, can ignore that. So. I would like to uh, ask the question about whether or not you can give me some signs or indication or some encouragement that maybe we shifted policies in the slightest manner. Have we brought any troops home? Are we less involved in Iraq? Will that war ever end? Or are we really going in the opposite direction because we're we're seeing Pakistan is so necessary. We need more troops, more expansion, more money, more D -D DOD funds. So. Coming from my perspective, I can't see the difference, even though, like I said, I am pleased that there's a willingness to talk and try to work things out, and I think that is very positive. I always think that people who aren't willing to talk are insecure. This whole idea that uh, we are so strong, it, it, to, to me, it seems that we lack confidence if we can't talk to people, and we are strong enough. Nobody's going to attack us militarily. Uh, so. I, I see it very important that we, we change our tone. I think, I think it's good that you got rid of the war on, the, t the term war on terrorism. How can you have war against a tactic? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. But I'm not sure overseas contingency operation is more specific. So could you address that and maybe give me some hints as far as maybe seeing, maybe seeing actual some shift in our policy? Well, thank you, Congressman. I think that uh, the President's actions in these nearly 100 days uh, do uh, match actions with words, although I admit there is a lot more to be done. We are still sorting out everything we've inherited and trying to make sense of it. You know, we want to protect America's national security, but we think there are better and more effective ways of doing that. So we are ending the war in Iraq. There is a definite end date for our troops to be there. The president did close Guantanamo. The president is looking for ways to engage with those who nobody wanted us to talk to, which is a sea shift in how we are proceeding. Words and actions both matter. I mean, at the end of the day, actions count more, but you have to begin by at least articulating a new approach. In our budget, we have asked for more money for diplomacy and development. And the Budget Committee in both the House and the Senate cut back the President's request. It's kind of old thinking, in my view. I mean, the Secretary of Defense has said that there are fewer foreign service diplomats posted overseas than there are sailors and Marines on one aircraft carrier. There are more musicians in the military bands than there are diplomats across the board. So 
we are trying to shift this gigantic ship of state, uh, Mr. Paul, and we are looking for your help to do so. And at the risk of uh, going over our time, I just want to say, having campaigned during the last presidential election, you had the most enthusiastic supporters of anybody I ever saw. I love to hear that. <laughs> well, I mean, my goodness, everywhere I went, they were literally running down highways holding your signs. Now, <laughs> every, so I, I just, I've never had a chance to tell you that, but your message obviously resonated with a lot of people. Thank you. Uh, you're going to encourage him. <laughs> 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 the, the gentleman from Florida.